For the next part, we actually had to calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. Now, when you looked at the bottle, it didn't tell you the concentration on the front, so we had to titrate it in order to figure what it was. I'm going to take the concentration of sodium carbonate and put it here, in, so I just have a nice list of everything that I have got. When I did the procedure, I made sure to have exactly 20 milliliters of this stock solution. Again, on the front of the glass, if you looked at it, it had an absolute uncertainty of 0.04 milliliters. We need to convert this into relative uncertainty. So I have the concentration of the aliquot. I have the volume of the aliquot. Um, I also have the volume of the hydrochloric acid that I needed to add to neutralize this. This is called the titer. We need to find the average titer because we did this titration about three times until we were within 0.1 of a milliliter in our uh, results. Now to find out the average here, we need to take the average of these values here and then our absolute uncertainty is going to be the range divided by two. So I'm just doing the average here. Now my absolute uncertainty, as I mentioned earlier, will be the range. So the range is the difference between the biggest and smallest value. Again, I have to convert this into relative uncertainty, a percentage. So now I have concentration of the aliquot, volume of the aliquot, and the volume of the titer, that was from the burette. And we don't know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. We don't know it. But the way we would calculate that is to find out how many moles we need per volume. To work this bit out, the moles, we use the molar ratio from the chemical equation. So we need to, we need to write up the chemical equation. Okay, as you look at the chemical equation here, we find out that for every, for every unit of sodium carbonate, we need two lots of hydrochloric acid to actually neutralize it, to actually reach our equivalence point. So that means that if I can calculate the moles in the flask of the aliquot, sodium carbonate, if I can find how many moles that is, then I can say that the number of moles that reacted with it to completely neutralize it would be double that value. So let's do that now. So the aliquot, let's do the moles. We normally would use mass divided by molar mass, but we're not using masses now, we're using volumetric analysis. We have to use volume. So that means we have to use a different equation to work it out, and that's going to be this equation from earlier. This one here. Concentration is equal to moles over volume. We can rearrange this in terms of moles, so it would just be concentration times by the volume. That's the equation we are going to use right here. Now the volume we, we used is 20 milliliters. We have to add these uh, relative uncertainties together, so 1.03 plus 0.2, and there's the number of moles. Now, just as I said earlier, from the chemical equation, for every one of these, I need double the amount of hydrochloric acid ions to actually balance it out. So therefore, the moles of hydrochloric acid will be twice the moles of sodium carbonate. So therefore, that would be 2.02 times 10. Okay. Now we can take this value and put it into this equation. And we can take this value and put it into the bottom as well. Oops, I just realized that this is actually supposed to be a liter sign. 9.8 plus or minus the addition of these two uh, relative uncertainties. And there's the concentration of our hydrochloric acid. The actual bottle was made to be 0.1 molar. If you actually write this longhand, we were pretty close.
The next stage is we now know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid which we filled our burette with. We then use that to figure out how concentrated the cloudy ammonia was. So let's do the same procedure here as we did um, and apply it to the uh, cloudy ammonia. Sometimes when there's a lot of steps such as dilutions and, and, and generally adding chemicals together, I like drawing a little flow diagram to get my head around everything. So when, what we did for the third part of the experiment is we started off with a small bottle of cloudy ammonia and we took from that, we took exactly 10 milliliters and we poured that into a volumetric flask. The volumetric flask was 200 milliliters and from that solution we drew about 20 milliliters and we poured this into the conical flask and we used a burette of hydrochloric acid and we used that to add into our flask. Uh, I've mucked up my diagram so that's actually supposed to be, you know, living on top of the conical flask. So let's just worry about this bit of the diagram so far. How much volume of hydrochloric acid did I need to fully react with the ammonium hydroxide solution in the conical flask? A good starting point is to write down all the kind of numbers and figures that you know. We knew the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. We also know the volume of hydrochloric acid. This is from our measurements of the titers. So we had an av we had 6.6. .6. Those are the values of our titers. We need to take an average of that. The range is going to be defined as the difference between the largest and the smallest value. We also know the volume inside of the um, conical flask of ammonium hydroxide. And the concentration of the ammonium hydroxide, well, we don't know this one. And the way we would calculate concentration normally would be how many moles per volume. Um, we do know the volume of the ammonium hydroxide, which we just have over here. We don't know the number of moles. We can work out the number of moles by finding out how many moles of hydrochloric acid do I need to concentrate this, uh, to neutralize this. So we have to do this with a chemical equation. Okay, from the chemical equation over here, we find that we have a one is to one ratio. Therefore, for every a molecule of ammonium hydroxide, I need exactly one molecule of hydrochloric acid to neutralize the, the solution. So we need to work out how many moles we had of hydrochloric acid, so we can write that as our equivalent moles of this. To do that, we would use the concentration formula. We can't find out moles of hydrochloric acid using mass because we don't have masses, we've only got volumes. But this is the equation we're going to use. So to rearrange that as moles is equal to concentration times volume. So away we go. Now that we know how many moles there was in the exact volume that we added to our ammonium hydroxide, we can equate that in saying that, well, there must have been an equal number of, of ammonium hydroxide ions in the conical flask. Now that we know the moles of ammonium hydroxide, we also know the volume of the ammonium hydroxide. We can now stick it into the moles over volume ratio here. Okay, now we have the concentration of the ammonium hydroxide in our conical flask but we need to work ourselves backwards through this dilution backwards into there. So the way we do this is we use our concentration formula. We do this with concentration before and volume before is equal to the concentration afterwards multiplied by the volume afterwards. Beforehand, the concentration, well, we don't know that. That's our goal. The volume beforehand, well, we do know that we added exactly 10 milliliters of that into our volumetric flask. We know the concentration beforehand, we just calculated it then, 3.3. .3. We also know the volume afterwards, which is the volumetric flask. If we rearrange our equation here, 
of dilution, we can solve for our unknown, C1. For this bit here, I've just added all the relative uncertainties together. 2.63 plus 0 0.13 plus 0 0.3 would give me a result of 3.06% of uncertainty. So we now know the concentration of the cloudy ammonia inside the tiny bottle that we've been given. But the claim is that they had, they claim that they had 41.2 grams per liter of ammonia in the form of ammonium hydroxide. We want to take this concentration and turn it into grams per liter. So instead of moles per liter, we want grams per liter. So you need to find out how many moles there are in one liter. Okay, so we now I know that in exactly one liter I have 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative one moles. Moles. And let me write that again. Now we need to convert that into a mass. And the result we get is 23 grams. That means that for our concentration, we have 23 grams per liter, which is very different from the claim of 41.2 grams per liter. 